So I'm going through my nuke yard. This is the first yard that I'm going to pick up to bring inside. And I haven't taken the pails off yet, so I'm going to do that now as I pull the hives back. I'll send Carrie this week to work ahead and pull all the pails for me. For the most part, these hives have uh, cleaned up that last little bit of syrup I wanted to give them. But there's a few, um, like this one, this pail still has syrup in it. About half the pail, so I, was, I always hate, I like when I can line things up in the fall so that I'm pay, taking off empty pails, bringing back half full or full pails of syrup is a pain in the ass. Looks like this will be one of those years. What am I going to do? So I'm going to, you know, the ones with just a little drags of syrup in it, I'll just dump out in the ground. The ones with, you know, half a pail of syrup in here, I haven't decided if I'm going to leave them in the pails or dump them back into the tote because I don't want to waste the sugar. I can give it back to them in the spring. Uh, the problem is if I leave this sucrose in the pail, it's going to harden, like it'll granulate. Um, and I'll have to dump it out of the pail anyways, because that, uh, even if it does liquefy a bit, still won't go through this screen. So I'll have to open feed it anyways. So this, the sugar is still good in here. So I'll probably just dump this back into the tote and store it outside um, and keep it till next spring. And then that'll be the first syrup out in the spring. No use dumping it on the ground. So yeah, I'm gonna move these hives onto the truck and into the winter shed. So what I have going on here is, um, whoa, these guys are still feeding. So I've alternated my entrances. So, whoa, settle down guys. Uh, so there's two pointing this way and two pointing that way. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just flip Two of them so I have the entrances pointing the same direction so when I put them into the winter shed so I can pair up two pallets and have the entrances facing out into the aisle and then stack them uh, six high and that way I'll make better use of my space some years when I have lots of space in the winter shed I'll just leave them like this because I'm lazy and uh, just run a single row with space on each side but this year I'm going to be a little tighter I want to uh, make best use of my winter shed so I'll just flip these guys around and make sure um, all the entrances are pointing the same direction. Well, I got these guys squared around now. Uh, some of these hives are acting, you know, they're acting a little too big for their britches. You know, they're pretending they're all shit hot, but they're not. I've been spot checking through this yard as I've been moving things around and <clears throat> I'm I'm not seeing tremendously big hives, and that's pretty much reflective to everything I've been seeing so far this fall. Uh, not overly stellar looking clusters. I mean, the, the cluster itself looks intact and really well defined and healthy, but the size of it is what I'm concerned about. So I'm just a little bit worried, like these guys here, these guys are probably on uh, three, three and a half frames, which is probably what they're gonna be. Uh, it all depend on how much drop I get throughout the winter and And you know, maybe that queen will start up some uh, Late winter brood rearing while in the shed just to buy these hives some extra time Because this side of the clock has started a lot earlier than in most years. So I'm anticipating and I'm, You know, you're gonna probably hear me complain about this all bloody fall as I move these hives in but I'm kind of anticipating uh, a rough winter this year just because my hives shut down so early, according to my math. Uh, like, it's the bees that emerge generally in September are the ones that make it till spring. And I pretty much had my winter nest hatched out end of August going into September. So if we have another long uh, winter that drags you know, well into spring like we did last year, uh, might be lights out for some of these guys or they might be colonies coming out of winter below that population threshold that I'm always talking about. But time will tell, I've done everything I've could. Um, they're well fed, they have no mites, they have good queens. So I'm just gonna have to rest on the fact that I've done everything I can and uh, we'll just see what happens through winter. <coughs>
Okay, so in the extracting room, here we've got a bunch of pails. These are going to be rinsed, cleaned up, and then sent away to cold storage. Uh, we have to bring in a bunch more pails yet. I have Carrie busy uh, in between jobs cleaning excluders, and I'll show you what we do. Looks like my melter is boiling here. i got to turn down the temperature a little bit. Okay, so what we do is... Fill up the mel melter with water. Whoa. And basically, what Carrie does is she takes the excluder, and you can see the wax on it wax and propolis. And she basically just dips the excluder into the hot water bath and just kind of washes it through, and it, and it just melts the wax and the propolis off, and it cleans up the excluder and she stacks them nice and neat over here. She also inspects the wires for uh, damage. This one's damaged here, that's why she has it set aside, which we will deal with later. But this works really well to keep our excluders clean. Uh, the only problem is all our excluders get dipped through the same tank, so we have to be aware of uh, possible disease spread. We have a very... Uh, strong surveillance uh, program in place in our operation looking for American fallow brood and, and that type of disease and we are seeing it as clean so we're not overly concerned about it right now. The winter shed she's got pretty much fixed up. So all the fans are in place here and running. So these will be running to circulate the air within the shed. The ventilation shafts are opened up again. That's the air intake and the air exit. So this is where I have one motor in there, one fan in there running for my idle and then the other to ramp up to purge the air if it warms up. The uh, controlling modules are here. This is my this is my idle. So this will this runs the first primary fan at four degrees at the idle speed of my set idle speed, and it'll ramp up as the temperature increases. This is my secondary fan. So when it gets over eight degrees, this one will turn on and purge the air. So the windows are blocked off. What we do is we use the uh, aluminum foil. This, is, this holds the light out really nicely. And then to further that, what we do is I just use a couple sheets of, of uh, rigid board insulation just to fill in the gap. And that way it completely blocks out the light and keeps this place dark. So I just have to sort a few things out of this shed before we can move in. And yeah, by the end of today, I'm gonna to have a row of nukes in the corner there. And hopefully by the end of, uh, not the end of this week, but the end of next week, I will have everything into the shed and we'll be ready for winter.